what up welcome back to the channel i'm Mordai J and we are locked in this is episode two of euphoria season two and we seen last week fez code we got his backstory on how he became the man that he is now we've seen that grandma was an og and he also put them paws on our boy nate i'm talking about hit him on the side of the head with a bottle well this is episode two and before we break this down shout out to the notification gang if you're new to the channel you'll be a part of it hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload hit that like button it's the easiest thing you can do now this week it looks like we're going to be focusing on nate's background and we're going to pick up exactly where we left off with him laying on the ground because hey it's a new year playboy you know what I'm saying there's no issues but we're going to see how nate became what he is and why does he continue to act the way that he does so let's jump into it this is euphoria episode two Fezco got on Nate's ass, and I'm talking about hit him with that bottle and continued to whoop on him. This is right after he got Lexi's number. Now, you hear Rue talking about Nate didn't know exactly why he got hit, and he's trying to think about it in his mind. Now, you see Maddie, Cassie, McKay, they're all carrying him out to the car. What do we see last week? Nate was messing with Cassie, and they were trying to hide it away from Maddie. So this is going to be interesting between them, and hopefully my boy Fez, he got to the house safely. Now Nate's in the hospital getting stitched up and all he can do is think about Maddie and Cassie. Now Maddie, she took everything as a joke and she was playing around. Now he underestimated Cassie because he feels like she's everything you would want in a woman. Now it's got him fantasizing about life and if he had a perfect life with Cassie, not with Maddie. Now he's going in debt with his dream now. He's thinking him and Cassie, they will have the perfect life. He gets her pregnant. He wouldn't treat his kid like his dad's treating him. You see Pops over there doing yoga and stuff. Ah, Nate, that concussion really got your mind wondering. Sometimes Nate, he fantasizes that his father just had a heart attack and passed away. So he wouldn't have to deal with him. We know that his dad is out here wilding out, sleeping with underage people and all this other nonsense. Now, Nate is thinking if he could just go back to the beginning and try to change his path in the future. But instead, he wakes up and he said his head is throbbing. Now, I've seen the behind the scenes on when they did this and they made the face for him. He said that he actually had it on so long that he was actually getting migraines in real life. It's the first day back to school after New Year's. Jules, she came back to school after running away. And her and Rue, hey, this is everything that Rue wanted. She got a girlfriend, school is going all right, I guess. And hey, things are looking up for the new year. Now you remember Rue, she met a guy named Elliot. He was in the laundry room talking about, oh, I'm a uh, high as hell fixing the, the washing machine. Well, he comes up and in Rue's head, she's thinking, I hope he doesn't talk and tell Jules that we met and we were doing drugs. Cause to Jules, she's think that Rue is somewhat clean, even though we seen her drunk at the party. Now, Elliot, he comes over here and it's a very awkward interaction because Rule is sitting there. She's hoping nothing comes out. And Jewel, she's looking at it. Uh, it seems like she's been hanging out with this Elliot guy. What Rue doesn't tell Jules is she's actually been hanging out with Elliot. They've been getting high, a lot of drugs, and he sells music on the Internet. So she's having a good time over here with this boy Elliot. His songs ain't that bad. I'm not the a guitar type of fella, but I'm like, OK, these songs are straight. Jewel storms off because she's kind of upset. She sees that there's something between Rue and Elliot. When she goes in the bathroom, she walks past Cassie. She's in here wiping up under her arms. And usually that means she ain't got no deodorant on or she ain't took a bath. Well, she's went through a low grade depression state ever since all this stuff's been happening with Nate. Even her mom's like, Ugh, God, when's the last time you took a bath? So she ain't taking a bath. She ain't cleaning up. She just eating food. I guess this is what depression does to a young teen. Now they go back to that night. You remember Nate picked her up from the little corner store. They had some beer. They ended up going back to the house and he's asking her, does she really want to do this? But if they do do this, she can't tell anybody because we know that she's friends with Maddie and Maddie used to mess with Nate. Now they said she's been drinking a little bit, but she wasn't too drunk. Now, you know, you to consent, you can't have any drink and that. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. When Nate went to the hospital that night, both Maddie and Cassie were by his side. So now Cassie's starting to feel like her and Nate, they have a little connection. While Nate was in the hospital, he actually texts Maddie and tells her, thank you for taking care of me. I love you always and forever. Now we know these two, they haven't been seeing eye to eye. Nate's out here doing whatever the hell he wants to, but what he's doing is reeling Maddie back in with these text messages. 
So of course, the first thing Maddie does, she tells Cassie, oh, Nate's so special, man. He texted me and told me he loves me, he cares for me. Cassie's hurt hearing this because she thinks there's something special going on between her and Nate. Now, where Maddie is, she's actually babysitting the kid. We know she never wanted to work, but she's babysitting the kid for a rich family. And the reason she's doing this is because she always wanted that rich lifestyle. Whenever the parents would leave, she would make sure the little boy is straight, feed him, put him to bed, and she would go in there and try on all of the mother's clothes. I'm talking about when we get on Instagram, we got the flyest outfit. Gucci, Louis, Prada, Fendi, it don't matter because we own our own private boutique and we get all of the antique Chanel dresses. So this is exactly what Maddie, the lifestyle she wants to live. Now the parents end up coming home a little bit earlier. She taking all kinds of pictures, sending them to Nate. Now they start to show up and she hears them pull up. Now she's in a quick scramble to try to put everything up, but she doesn't close the jewelry drawer that she took some earrings out of. Now, when the mother gets home, she's nervous. You know that heart is beating. You know when you did something that you weren't supposed to do and your parents show up and you trying to put everything back together, that heart. Well, the mother says, uh, Maddie, could you come here real quick? Now, we remember that drawer wasn't closed, but when she goes in here, the lady just wants her to help with the zipper to take her dress off. And she's like, oh, Maddie, you're so sweet. So, you know, she was in here panicking because if she would have been called with them clothes on, hey, no more babysitting over here. Back at school, Maddie's talking about, I think I would look good pregnant. I'm not going to wear any of those clothes, though. I'm just going to be me, but pregnant. Now, y'all know the friend that we don't really see much. She's like, y'all remember when I got pregnant? Maddie looked at her like, ew, I definitely wouldn't look like that. But now they're talking about Kat and her boyfriend, Evan. And they're saying, speaking of baby daddies, that kid, Evan, y'all look good together. Now, Kat, she likes Evan because he's not like one of the old people that she's online selling things to and being their kitty cat. He actually likes her for who she is. The only problem is she doesn't like him like that. She doesn't know why she's not in love with him. She gets in the room. She starts fantasizing that a big, strong man with the sword. You remember in season one, they came out and they were making sure that Kitty was good because she is their leader. Well, this big, strong guy, he cut our boy. He cut him up and she's looking. And now he's coming in there and he's trying to conquer Kitty. She likes Ethan, but she doesn't like him as much as he likes her. And she's just faking it in front of her friends. Like, yeah, Ethan is good. But deep down inside, she just doesn't understand why she doesn't love him like that. It's because Ethan is a good guy. And y'all see the good guys always finish last. Nate finally gets released from the hospital. He's doing bad. Head wrapped up. Now, he doesn't like his father. And Rue is saying, if a kid doesn't like their parents, that's not their fault. They weren't asked to be here. Now, if a parent dislikes their kid, that's on them because you're the one that wanted to have this kid. But we really know that the reason he has all this hate for Nate is because of how he made him. Everything he's done molded Nate into the man that he is. Once Nate got out of the hospital, he went home, but he immediately wished that he went back because now Cassie's calling him. She's crying, Nate, don't do this. We supposed to be together. I don't know what to do. He laying down in the bed hurting. He ain't trying to listen to this. Now, Cassie's mom, she is one of the cooler parents on the show. I'm not going to lie. So she's asking Lexi, what's wrong with your sister? She's like, oh, I think she's having a mental breakdown. She's like, why? Uh, because she's single or something like that. Now, the mom, she's been there before. And you know, the only rules that she's ever really gave Cassie was don't get pregnant. So she sees her daughter in the backyard. She knows there's something more going on than just being single. Now, Nate just made things a little bit worse for himself. Cassie's doing all this and he's trying to get her off the phone. So what he does, he tells her, I promise we get to meet each other. We can see each other in person next weekend. So now Cassie, she's like, okay, that's a little bit of stress off my back. But she can't let Maddie know that she's messing around with Nate and they're seeing each other. And he tells Cassie straight up, you can't let Maddie know this because she'll kill me. But we know for sure she'll kill you in real life if she finds out that you're messing with me. So now Cassie is spooked because she knows how bad Maddie can really get, especially when it comes to Nate. She's starting to flash back of all the times she's seen Maddie getting on people's ass, slamming them against lockers. She had a kid's head in the locker. Bing, bing, bing. I'm like, damn, slam the head against the glass. Ain't no way. If my daughter got whooped on like that, you're going to go to school. You're going to get this girl back. You're going to do something. Maddie ain't about to be punking my daughter. Rue didn't know that Jules would be that upset about her hanging out with Elliot. 
She didn't think that Jules was the clingy type, you know, that wanted to be all around her, but this actually hurt Jules. Now Jules has to understand, you ran away, Jules. You just now came back. She went off and did her own thing. She hit the drugs a little bit, but she's saying it's not that big of a deal. Now Jules says she has to go because if not, she'll be grounded for another two weeks. But you can tell that there's a little bit of hurt there still. Now, Cal wants to know exactly what happened to Nate that night on New Year's because we know Cal has a lot of influence and power within the town. Now, he shows up to Cassie and Lexi's house and he knows that somebody there knows what went on. Now, he starts to threaten them and tries to scare him and say, you want me to bring in the sheriff? I can have him confiscate phones and have him look through everyone's records to see exactly what went on. Now, I wouldn't have been scared of this. I would have said, go ahead. All I am is a witness. Unless he has a warrant, he's not going to be able to get my phone. And by the time that they get my phone, I can easily dispose of it before the warrant is issued. But they're scared. So they're they're like, uh, uh. Now, you remember Faye from when they went to go handle some business and try to get that new connect? Well, Faye, she ended up going on the run. And she's staying with Fezco right now. Ashtray is upset that she's here because of how she's living. I'm talking about she's just in the refrigerator doing whatever the hell she wants. Now, the reason Faye is on the run is because her and the guy that got his nose broken, they're staying at a motel. And she ended up pushing the motel manager over the balcony. So now the cops are looking for her. <laughs> they stuff her up in the vent. And then she ends up running away out the back of the motel. And she's hiding behind a trash can. And this is how Fezco picked her up. He didn't know the whole story, but that's the backstory of how Faye ended up living, well, staying with Fezco and Ashtray. Fez picks her up behind the trash can at the Taco Bell. She's like, I, I didn't do anything. Fez is like, I honestly don't give a fuck. I'm not trying to hear none of that. I'm just picking you up and I'm going to get you back to the house. When they get to the house, he gives her three simple rules. Don't touch nothing. Don't talk to Ash because Ashtray doesn't like her living there. And don't go in his room. Those are the only three rules. Other than that, Faye, you do whatever the hell you want. Now, Cal's in here still talking about getting the chief of police, the sheriff, everybody to dig into this to get these records. Well, Cassie, she ends up folding. She ends up giving the information that it was Fez that hit her son over the head. Now, Lexi understood that Cal was in there bluffing. He can't do none of that. He doesn't have the power for any of this. And she's telling Cassie, you folded. He got in here. You got so damn scared. You telling on who Fez is. Now, the reason she's defending Fez is because you remember at the party, he was the first person around her age that actually wanted to have a conversation and get to know her. So she's like, damn, as soon as I got to know somebody nice, he got to whooping people's ass. With all this happening, Fez is something special to her life, but she's starting to think about how weak she's been over her lifetime. You remember their pops came? He was like, I need to go in the house just for a minute. I got to get some things. Well, he went in there. He was still in the silverware because he's trying to pawn it off to get some money for drugs. She didn't say nothing. Then the day that Rue OD, Lexi was actually there. and She was telling her she needed to stop doing drugs or she's going to tell. And she's like, who are you going to tell my mom? But Lexi doesn't do anything. She went home. And later that night, her mom comes in and tells her that Rue actually OD. Now, if she would have said something to any one of the adults, this could have possibly prevented Rue from ODing. So she's always felt like she's been weak and she wants to change that. So the moment Cal came over, this changed Lexi's life. She said, you know what? I'm not going to sit back and be weak anymore. I'm actually going to speak up for things whenever I see it. So she's going to go see Fez. Oh, this is going on. Rue don't give a damn. She over at Elliot's house. They getting high. My dog is making music. I guess they live in the teenage dream. Now, Elliot, he's sitting here and he's talking to Rue about her using drugs and things. But he also starts to dig a little deeper instead of just being surface level with her and asking her about her drug addiction. And is it really bad? And should he really be hanging out with her and allowing her to do drugs around him? Does he think that he's a part of it? And she's saying, nah, everything's all right. Meanwhile, she's hitting another line of stuff. But Elliot, he's kind of looking at it because he's seen how she was on New Year's. So if she can easily get like that. He's thinking I might be potentially contributing to her down spiral, but he doesn't want to do that. But she's saying everything is all right. Now, Kat's still trying to figure out why she doesn't love Ethan like that. So she decides to make a list of the pros and cons. Now, everything that goes down to primes, cute, handsome, funny, sexy, things of that. But there's nothing deep. Everything is just surface level. 
Now she's in here and she's watching all this self-help stuff on the internet, but she starts to daydream again. And all these women are telling her, you need to break the beauty mode, body positivity. Get up, cat, be strong. Make yourself a bad B like you did last year. Now, you remember last year she was on that internet shaking that thing. You know what I'm talking about? So she's saying, I can't, I can't even get up. They like, you got to do it, cat. You got to do it for everyone out there. We're starting with you. So she's daydreaming and she's hyping herself up to get up and be better. Rue leaves Elliot's house. We don't know where she's going. But she's on her bicycle. When she looks over, she's like, what the fuck? She sees Cassie running out of her house and she's running over to a truck. What day is it? Because you remember, Nate said him and Cassie, they're going to be able to get together. But Rue sees them. So we got to remember that moving forward. While Cassie and Nate, they off on their little adventure on their own. Maddie is calling Nate. She wants to know where he's at, but he's not answering his phone. And guess who she calls next? Maddie calls Cassie and she ain't answering because who she with? She's with Nate and they're on their little Saturday night adventure that Nate promised they'll be able to see each other in person. Well, she was leaving Elliot's house to get to her little AA meeting. You know, we got to get her right. <sighs> she's showing up, but she's still high. And you know, the black man that's been helping her out. He's looking at her like, you're on that suicide mission again, aren't you? During the meeting, she's in here, sleep, hoodie on, not paying attention to anybody. He's looking like this kid, man. She's headed down the wrong path. Elliot's in the living room with his cousin, smoking a little bit. And I'm like, okay, Elliot, y'all in here, y'all living it up. I always wonder where the parents are because they smoking big weed in this house. So you know that stank gonna be in there. But she's like, who is your friend? He's like, oh, it's just a friend, nothing more. She's like, nah, I seen your friends. This one must be something special. Cassie and Nate, they pull up to one of these work sites. It looks like somewhere that Cal's, you know, he's been working, Nate's father. And we seen that Cassie had texted Nate and said that I don't think us having sex, it was a big mistake. And he called her back and told her don't ever text that again. Now, once they finally arrive at this destination, he looks at her and tells her that he likes her, but everything they did was a mistake and they may not be able to see each other. So of course, Cassie, she's in her feelings because she thought it was gonna be something special with our boy, Nate. She gets out middle of the night and just runs off into the construction site. While Cassie's out there with Nate, her sister Lexi, she said she wanted to become stronger. So she's actually going to talk to Fez because after that night, they haven't spoke to each other. Now it becomes an awkward interaction and he's trying to talk to her and feel where she is, but she's kind of distanced after she's seen what he did that night to Nate. Now this is some real white people stuff here. She runs into the construction area Nate's out there, Cassie, Cassie, where you at? She just ran upstairs, but he found her though. All she wanted was a, a little bit of love and affection from him. Nate, she wants to be with you. She's playing hard to get. So they up there and they getting it on. Now I hope they're careful and they don't get any splinters because this is all raw wood that they standing on. Cal ends up showing up at the corner store because he has the information that it was Fez that hit his son because Cassie folded. Now Lexi sees him and she knows that this information is out. Fez is looking like, who is this guy? Now, Cal, we did see that he had a gun in his pocket. So Fez looks through the little cooler, through the little refrigerator at, <laughs> at Ashtray. And Ashtray's like, man, let me get this gun because it could get ugly in here. Now, Kyle is starting to ask a lot of questions. Are you the only one here? You running this by yourself? Y'all got bubble gum? Fez is looking at him. Why are you asking all these questions? Do you normally do this? But he's just trying to get a feel of the situation in case he has to come back. Cause he's not going to do anything now because Lexi can identify him. Now we got Ashtray in the back. He got that gun cocked just in case. And we know Cal has a gun in his pocket, but he reaches in there and he just hands the $20 to Fez and nothing goes down. Ali has been trying his best to help Rue conquer whatever she has going on, her addiction and trying to get her off of this. So she rode her bike, but he looked at her and was like, you, you a little too high. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a ride to the house. Now, when they get to the house, he's like, I'm gonna go in and talk to your mom because I will want whoever's driving my daughter home to come in and introduce herself to me, especially an older black man with a younger woman. And she's like, please, please don't tell her that I'm on drugs. She said, that ain't my battle, darling. That's on you to tell her or you to conquer. After all of that, Fez, he's locking the house down, turning on the alarms. He got the shotgun because Cal, he said that he's a concerned father, but we know he had that gun and he may have been sizing up who's all at that store in case he needs to come back and do something. But Fez is going to be ready just in case. Rue, 
she sits in there her mom is talking about oh ali is attractive like uh okay ma won't you go talk to him but she also texts jewel and says i want to sneak out and come stay with you but jewel she feels a certain type of way since she knows she's been hanging with elliot we hear maddie talking about i'm gonna get back with nate i know it's dumb but i i just think i should do it and jewel's is like you shouldn't now maddie why are you putting yourself in this situation y'all just gonna break up next week or y'all gonna be arguing but that's what these teenage kids do they all mess with each other they all talk to each other and this is the outcome you get faye has got a lot of stuff going on and he also got to watch out for faye her ass in the bathroom she didn't pass out and put heroin in her thigh and he's looking at it like come on i already got my grandma back there i gotta deal with i gotta look out for ashtray i gotta make sure that my house is locked down so cow won't come through i gotta run the business it's just a lot on Fed's plate right now cow's been out on a mission nate's been out with cassie but when they get back to the house they need to have a little talk and nate brings it up he gets straight to it you remember that kid you were messing with talking about jewels well you recorded it and uh i don't have that tape anymore dad so we need to figure out what we're going to do because you're going to go down for all of this if it gets out. Now, Kyle, he is upset because he knows his whole life is on that tape. If that damn CD gets out with him and Jules, it's over. So all Kyle wants to know, Nate, yes or no, do you have that? And we know he doesn't. Maddie has it. She took it when she left. Uh-oh, it's about to get scary for Kyle. There you go, episode two of Euphoria. Let me know what you think is going to happen, especially with Nate and also with his father, Cal. Are they going to be able to get this CD back from Maddie or is Maddie going to hold it and use it as blackmail for Nate to get back with her and stay good? Let me know what you guys think. I'm Mo IJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.